Hello dear friends! This is Jaybird and welcome to my first YouTube video! Today I'm going to be doing a watercolor study of Estella's J, but first I thought it would be fun to do a quick tour of my current watercolor sketchbook. This sketchbook represents my first real attempt to learn to watercolor properly and officially. Uh, first off, we've got this little sticker portrait I made for a friend for a surprise party. Look how fast he's going! That's not watercolor, it was done digitally. I wanted to get off on the right foot, so I decided to start off by painting in public from life. These masks are from the Bella Coola Nation here in BC, and they are painted at my local museum. I think it's the Nuxalk Nation? I liked that these came out, and that was really encouraging, so this sea land skeleton was my next shot. This was more challenging because it's more complicated, and also because there were tons of people that day, so I painted from a distance. This is Sam, one of my best friends, who also happened to have a birthday coming up at the time, so I decided to use her as my practice model and paint her portrait as a gift. Getting a flattering and accurate likeness is really tricky, so even though this isn't perfect, I was relieved that it came out as well as it did. Even so, I wanted to keep practicing, so I got a still life together. Painting glass and reflective surfaces is a pretty classic watercolor exercise, from what I can gather, so I wanted to have my own stab at it. Up till this point, I'd done all my paintings with a Koi Travel watercolor kit. These are sun conures. They're really stunning parrots, although also really noisy parrots. And I drew up five to compare my Koi set with Prismacolor pencils, Copic markers, gouache, and Rembrandt watercolors. The painting portion of this was actually taken to about 70% completion while I was in a kind of a dark pub with some friends. So I had no idea what colors I was actually using. I was really just going based on what I thought was right and values. Luckily, I ended up being really happy with it. I used fine text for this one, so the actual painting has a pink metallic sheen coming out from the flower, but the camera wasn't picking it up, so... Eh. Oh, this. Okay, this was the first time in the book that I really could not get something to look how I wanted it to look. At all. Unfortunately, I actually put down my watercolors for a while after this one. I was really discouraged. But I got them out again to take on a kayaking trip with some friends. Forcing myself to paint out in the world and in front of people again got me back on my feet, and even though I didn't like it much at the time, I actually really like this now. This was from the same trip. These are dromedaries, and they're basically like big soft-bodied water tanks. I never finished this one. You can see it's even still got the tape on it. This next one was painted outside, hanging out with a friend. We had a really lovely visit, but I remember struggling to come up with a composition and point of focus, so the painting itself still feels really messy to me. Okay, here we go. I've had this idea for a bigger painting involving a hawk or a falcon bouncing around in my head for a while now, and I decided that I wanted to gauge where my ability was at. So I did this study to get a feel for how to approach painting a bird like this. I kind of surprised myself with how much I liked it, and I started thinking I might want to bring some other birds into the project as well. So I kept going, and I kept playing around with posing and framing and color combinations between the birds and the backgrounds. Just trying to get all the feathers to look right has been an adventure, but it's been really fun, and I feel like I've been learning new things with each bird. Alright, so far that's the falcon, the kingfisher, the Canada goose, and the rooster. I know roosters are cliche, but they're really fun. And this is the African fish eagle. Fun fact, my boyfriend saw this one in the early stages and thought it was a bald eagle, right before the Canada vs US hockey final during the Olympics this year. He may or may not have teasingly called me a traitor for that one. <laughs> Anyways, this is a sketch that we're going to be painting today. This is the last page of this sketchbook, so no pressure or anything. And it's going to be a Stellar's Jay. I think more people are familiar with the Blue Jay, but they actually live more on the eastern side of North America. Here in British Columbia, we've got these guys instead. They're noisy fuss pots, and I love them. I use cheap paper to do the rough sketch, and then I use a light box to trace it over so the cold pressed paper doesn't get all smushed and damaged. And I think that's everything. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay, so you just let me mask off the bird and the edges to keep it clean and allow myself to use more natural approach while painting in the background. And by the way, if it seems like things are getting painted in between the jump cuts, they are. <laughs> this is a painting video, but I really want this to be fun for anyone to watch, and with the sketchbook tour at the front, I really didn't want to scare people away with a huge timestamp. Also, I'm new to editing video, and I'm having fun experimenting, so expect this and the next few videos to be trying out a few different approaches. Let me know what you like best and any suggestions you have in the comments. And speaking of trying out new approaches, I realized early on that in my haste and trepidation of filming and painting for the first time, I kind of dropped a step in the planning process. 
and then I decided to put the J in a standing pose, and then it kinda just floated in space. Well, gosh darn it, blast it all, what a dork video over, I guess. Thanks for coming, go home. I'm just kidding. I painted in a branch. It's easy to catastrophize a mistake like that, but sometimes you just have to hand the reins to your inner Bob Ross and roll with your happy little accidents. If you take that approach, they work out more often than they don't. Oh, okay, get excited. Here comes the best part. I always find the tape removal so satisfying, sometimes even more than actually finishing a painting, although they often happen at the same times. Anyways, the underpainting. So obviously we're onto the bird now, and the approach I'm taking here is to layer. I'm putting in blocks of base color in the lightest shade. With watercolor, you only really get white by leaving the paper unpainted and clean, so this is also when you determine where your highlights will be. This is why, if you're doing a finished piece, it's always a good idea to do a color comp or two to figure out your colors and light sources ahead of time, so you can paint the real one with confidence. Did I do that here? No. I just winged it. Get it? I winged it? Cause it's a bird? Okay. Well anyway, here I go starting the second layer. I'm adding darker and more vibrant tones over the underpainting selectively after it's dried, and in this way I can kind of build the painting. This is definitely not the only way to use watercolor, or some would argue even the definitive way. Painting this way is slow and it's cautious, but it's meditative and it's fun and has a really seductive sense of control to it that you don't often get with watercolor. I enjoy it. If you want to get a photoreal look in a watercolor painting, this is a good way to do it. Although personally, while I do find hyperreal wildlife art and still life watercolors impressive, if that's all there is to them, I generally don't find them very engaging. So while I want to build and have those skills, I really want to keep experimenting too. Okay, we're onto the third pass. Things are getting darker, more defined, more three-dimensional, and hopefully more alive. This is my favorite part of the process, aside from the sketching at the beginning, to really get into the zone and lose myself in what I'm doing. The painting's generally on its way out of its awkward phase at this point, and you can just get in there and be as much or as little as a perfectionist as you want to be. The trick is staying in touch with the big picture just enough that you don't overwork the poor thing to death in the process. One thing I want to get better at is separating the ground from the subject. I actually really like the graphic look, so adding a bit of line work to these birds is aesthetically fine for me, but I'd like to develop my skill level enough so that it doesn't feel like I have to rely on that step. <laughs> Listen to me. I want to get good enough that what's in my head just goes on the paper. I, yeah, I guess we all do, don't we? So I'm just popping in a couple details here, tightening up the border, showing the last few strokes in real time, and voila! I'm trying to show the glimmer from the metallic fine tech I added, but once again the camera and the light are conspiring against me. <laughs> It feels really good to complete this book. I'm always arting in some way or another, but as I said before, this book really does represent my first real attempt to take on watercolor as an adult. I definitely got discouraged a few times, but looking back, I feel pretty good about the success to failure ratio in here. And I learned a big ol' bunch, I think. Thank you, sketchbook. And now, it's time for round two. There's a lot I want to do on this channel, but this book, I really want to fill up here, hopefully with you along for the ride. So, yeah, like and subscribe. Stick around, I'll be doing a lot more of this stuff. 
Thanks for watching and supporting my first video. See you soon, dear friends. Jaybird out.